We're at a centre for internally displaced people from Enerhoda, about 50 kilometres away from here, and home to the largest nuclear power station in Europe. About 70% of the population has fled since the start of the war, and many of them have come here to Zaporizhia, to this center, where they can get foodstuffs, where they can get warm clothing, where they can get bedding for the winter, and where they can get psychological help from experts here at the center. Aliona is a volunteer at the center and herself fled in Erhoda when the Russians invaded. The center has a shortage of hygiene items. We don't get enough from our donors. Same with blankets and warm clothes. For instance, we have received 200 such items and are trying to work out how to share them with 5,000 people. We are very grateful to the center for the good quality food packages they have given us and the towels, children's food and sanitary products. We are really grateful. So in the depot here, we've got aid from all over the world. Here, for instance, the Croix Rouge Francaise, French Red Cross. Over here, we've got pasta uh, from Ukraine. Uh, and just here from Denmark, from the Danish Red Cross, pillowcases. Oleksi is a member of the Unerhoda Town Council and an employee at the nuclear power station. He escaped at the beginning of July when he was warned that the Russians were going to arrest him. They're putting workers at the nuclear plant under psychological pressure to sign contracts with the Russian nuclear authority. Most don't want to sign, but the Russians are arresting workers at the plant randomly. Some disappear for a couple of weeks. Others are still in prison. There are 15,000 people still living in Enerhoda, many of them working at the nuclear power station and under constant pressure, psychological and sometimes physical, from the Russian army. Their presence there and their expertise is critical to the proper functioning of the nuclear station. Without them, the risk of a nuclear accident would be far greater.